As the country mourns the loss of 20 innocent children and six school workers in Connecticut, many are now asking what could have been done to stop this mass shooting. Here's what we know about the gunman. He was 20 years old, attended college classes when he was just 16 years old. People described him as socially awkward and a troubled genius. His mother told others he had Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism. Here to talk about the warning signs in a case like this is best-selling author Dr. Greg Jantz. Great to see you. Thanks. For being oh, here. thank you. I can't believe we're talking about this again. No, again, absolutely. And we should say there is a lot, folks, that we don't know yes. about the gunman. Right. But we are getting a picture of the gunman. What jumps out to you from what we have heard and Well, learned? I immediately get a sense of isolation and that he somehow feels different. I'm wondering if he feels even in some way persecuted, that he's there's something that is wrong that he's got to get revenge for. There's something more going on that we're still going to discover. Yeah, there are conflicting reports about potential mental illness, yes. but we know that mom, uh, according to friends, was a gun enthusiast. Right. Do you have concerns about if there are concerns about somebody in the home with mental illness? Should somebody else have firearms in the home or is it not that simple? My personal opinion is no, you should not. We never want to risk. We always want to err on the side of ultimate safety, so no. And when there's issues around mental illness, we must look at the issue of unpredictable unpredictable behavior. We can't predict what a person may or may not do. Well, talk to us about unpredictable okay. behavior. What would jump out at you? Well, um, one of the things that jumps out right away is unpredictable behavior means that there's some unresolved issues. He may feel, as I mentioned, persecuted. He may feel as though uh, there's some untreated, uh, what I'll call paranoia. There's some issues going on that we don't know fully about that he's gonna act out. You also say someone who may act out blames others. Yes. What are you talking about blaming others? So is it for their problems? Well, they're blaming for everything. There's, a, there's what I call a spirit of blame. This is a person that takes no self-responsibility. In fact, they see themselves as right and they're going to make it right in their mind. You also say if they have a history of mental illness, yes. that is a red flag. But many people in this country have mental illness. Well, it's the type of mental illness. It's the type, it's what I, I paranoia. It's a type of maybe a schizophrenic type where there's a disconnect with reality. Oh, sometimes we call it antisocial behavior, uh, where the person's not really walking fully in reality. That's what concerns us. We are now getting a profile yes. of a gunman behind these mass shootings. Typically young, yes. typically male, often dejected. What do we need to know about this? What do we need to break through to this population? Well, first of all, if we're a parent, we have a concern. I took a call this morning with a mom who says, you know, my son, I'm really worried about him. He fits this profile. We need to intervene right away. Don't We don't wait for regret. So it's a time where we've got to intervene and get the professional help that they need. It's hard to know who to call though. Because it is. not all of us have a mental health professional no. in our lives. Okay. And if you call police, they're responding to a lot of calls. If nothing has been done illegally, if a crime has not been committed, often police can't do anything. No, about they it. can't. They can't take a record. So right. at least there's note of it. But that isn't stopping the potential perpetrator. Right, absolutely. But I can call a mental health hotline. I can begin to gather more information. That also goes on, on record that I'm I've put out my concerns. I also can, if the behavior is such where it's endangering others, I can get help. How do you know when you need to make a call? That is the toughest question for so many people. Well, I'm going to say you're going to trust that gut feeling. You're going to trust that intuition inside that says something is terribly wrong. Because so often we hear from parents who, who say, you know what, I knew all along or I knew something was off. And, and they regretted they didn't make that move. As somebody who works in the field, I'm wondering about your perspective yes. and what you thought about on Friday. Remember, this is coming yes. off the heels of another mass shooting at a mall to our south in Portland. And then we see this terrible tragedy at a school. What were you thinking and, and what is the answer? And I know it's not easy. Right. You know what? I was in shock myself. And I look at these kids and I have kids and I look, you know, here's a place that's supposed to be safe. And uh, what this does, this is going to create a ripple effect. And anybody that's got issues of, of trauma in their life or anxiety, this amplifies and makes us hyper vigilant and creates a lot of anxiety. You know, and I was feeling, uh, feeling the same thing. I don't think the nation has reacted to a story like this no. since 9 11. Yeah. Dr. Greg Jans, thanks as always for being here. Good to be with Appreciate you. Appreciate it.